Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. It is again a pleasure and a privilege on my part to uh, preach in behalf of our senior pastor na nasa Amerika po ngayon. Sa ating mga panauhin, ang dalangin po namin ay makasumpong po kayo ng pagpapala ngayon sa ating Panginoon at makilala nyo ang tunay na Jesus ng Biblia personally in your own heart. And it is my personal prayer that God will give us remaining fruits sa ating church that will serve the Lord and will give glory and honor to His name. So, uh, nais ko po habang nakatayo kayo ay buksan niyo po sa Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. <clears throat> Beginning from verse number 17. To 23. It says right here, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, Do not commit adultery, Do not kill, Do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all this have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And verse 23, And Jesus looked round about, and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches Enter into the kingdom of God. Shall we bow down our heads in prayer? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are committing, dear God, Lord, your message right now that it will find a special lodging places in the hearts of your people. I plead, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the precious God, the Holy Spirit, will speak to the hearts of our visitors and that they would realize the value of being related to you experientially. And they may know the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and risen Savior, personally in their hearts, not through any pictures or images, but through the sound preaching of your precious word. Please anoint the lips of your servant, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Did you know that the book of Mark is very rich as far as the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned? Kayo pong nagbabasa ng mga Bible, ay makikita nyo sa Mark chapter 10 na napakadami po ng mga katuruan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Now one of the teachings of the Lord, before we go to the life of this rich young ruler, by the way, I would like to entitle this message as The Rich Young Ruler's First Love. Ayan po ang title ng message ngayong umaga. The Rich Young Ruler's First Love. Ayan. But before we go to the life of this rich young ruler, let us just first uh, analyze the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ from chapter 10 verses 1 to 16. Dito po tinukoy ng Panginoon, firstly, He taught about putting away your wife or the teachings regarding divorce. I think some of you or many of you, brethren, you have read this. Because one day, the Pharisees asked the Lord the question, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? The Lord Jesus Christ was put into the spot. Is it lawful to put away your wife? Tempting him, the Bible says. And you know, the Lord Jesus Christ answered those Pharisees and He said, because of the hardness of your own heart or the callousness of your nature, he allowed divorce to happen. But originally, it is not God's will because the Lord said that what God had joined together, what is the meaning of that? 
marriage. Did you know that the Lord God gave the highest premium on marriage as far as human relationship is concerned? But the devil had blinded the eyes of men and continually blinding the eyes of people all over the world that marriage is nothing. That's why the Bible says a, a, a marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But Satan do not want that. He said you can go on and have relationship and start a family without the benefit of marriage. That's why a lot of people all over the world, even young people, you know, are guilty of this. Yesterday, one of my uh, pastor friend, Dr. Benoni Hernandez, was our speaker. And he testified that more than 70% of those people that he has married, there is already something inside. What's the meaning of that? People nowadays do not value anymore marriage. You see? Because of the hardness of your own heart. The Bible says, what God had joined together, marriage. And by the way, the Lord Jesus Christ respected and honored marriage. Sir, how did you know that? Because He attended the uh, wedding in Cana of Galilee. Now, probably that might not be a Christian wedding, but nevertheless, it was a wedding. And right there he went just to testify to us that he values marriage. Amen, brethren? He went there. You see, what God had joined together, let no man part asunder. That's why when a man begins to put away his wife and he married another, he committed adultery against, not against God, but against his wife. Mm. And if the wife begins to put away his, her husband, she committed adultery against him. Mm. And it is sin against the Lord. You see? Have you forgotten your promise before God that you were, are going to live together as husband and wife and love her in sickness and in health? Diba? Tayo may mga, kayo po may mga asawa. Tayo po may mga asawa. Hindi ba? Yan ang pinangako natin sa Panginoon. And we promise the Lord that we will be with Him or with her. Kaya nga, sabi ko sa inyo, mga kapatid, sa mga mananampalataya, uh, may mga patutuo nga yung ibang mga unsaved uh, na wala sa Panginoon na mas mainam pa at mas magagaling pa ang kanilang patutuo when it comes to marriage relationship. Di ba? Ayoko pong mag bigay ng judgment pero ako po ay natuwa sa patutuo ng asawa nitong isang uh, movie actor na she stood with him till his death. Ito po yung asawa ni Christopher Reeve. Kilala niyo po ba si Christopher Reeve? Kasi malapit nang ipalabas yung Superman na naman eh. Sa June 12, di ba? May panibago na namang Superman. I heard na ayaw ng, ng ibang mga Hollywood actors na gumanap ng Superman sapagkat meron daw jinx iyan. Ha? Na kapag ka gumanap ka ng Superman, ikaw ay madidisgrasya o mamamatay ng pagkarinig ko. You see? Pero itong si Christopher Reeve ay nakasakay yata sa kabayo at siya bumagsak at uh, na, yung kanyang spine mula dun sa kanyang leeg ay nabali. And he became quadriplegic. Pag sinabing quadriplegic, mula, mula ulo hanggang paa, hindi ka na makakilos. Kinakailangan mo ng someone to bathe you, to take care of you, you know, to clean you, to brush your teeth. This was done by his own wife until his death. Hindi ko alam kung kristyano yung babaeng yan. Mm. Pero talo pa ang mga kristyanong iba. Di ba? Mm. You see? What God hath joined together, let no man part asunder. And to our beloved brethren here, if your husband is a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is your wealth. I treasure my wife as my wealth. And by the grace of God, I was faithful to him the time I got married until she passed away. She's the only woman that I love dearly in my heart. Because firstly, because of my promise to my God that I will love her and treasure her and be with her, comfort her, strengthen her, and support her. Because that was the promise I gave to the Lord when we were married here way back in May 25, 1985. You see, what God had joined together, let no man part asunder. That was the teachings of the Lord. One of the teachings. And secondly, He taught about, you know, blessing little children. When those 
Jewish parents brought the little children to come to the Lord. You remember that? And uh, in order just to touch him, the apostles, the disciples rebuked them. And you know what? When the Lord Jesus Christ saw the attitudes of his disciples, if you will look at your Bible, you will find there that he was much, take note of the word much, displeased. He was much displeased because that was a display of an uncompassionate heart. That was an unkind treatment to little children. That's why he told his disciples, Suffer little children to come unto me. For such is the kingdom. And forbid them not, the Lord says. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Allow these little children. Siguro yung mga batang yun, mga one year old, or two years old, three years old. Those children that have not yet reached the age of accountability. Amen? Kaya nga ito ang is, isa sa mga strongest verses that we believe that all children without reaching the age of accountability are going to heaven. They are all covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kahit na anak ng Muslim yan, ng Katoliko yan, ng Iglesia yan, o ng anumang relihiyon. As long as children have not yet reached the age of accountability, they are all covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are going to heaven. Kaya lahat ho ng mga bata, punta na langit yan. You see? Eh, can you imagine, sino ba yung mga batang yun na lumapit sa Panginoon? Eh, anak yun ng mga Jewish parents. At karamihan ng mga Jewish parents na yun, ayun yung mga sumigaw, crucify Him! Crucify Him, di ba? Aba, eh, kung hindi tayo naniniwala sa doktrinang yan, eh, di yung mga batang yan, dapat pumunta sa impyerno sapagkat anak yun ng mga parents na nagsalita ng crucify Him. Di ba? Pero ang sabi ng Panginoon, allow the little children to come to me. And if you will check out your Bible, and forbid them not, at kinuha niya yung mga batang yan, nilagay niya sa kanyang arms, and bless them. Nako, napakasama naman yata at napakahipokrito ng ating Panginoon. Kukunin niya yung mga batang yan, and bless them, and afterwards send them to hell. <laughs> diba? Pambira kayo. Ah, sabihin ng Panginoon, kayong mga bata, kayong mga anak ng mga Jewish parents na mag, uh, magsisigaw na i-crucify ako, ah, sige, i-bless ko muna kayo, pero later on, dadaling ko kayo sa impyerno. No, sir. You see? So, yan ang teachings ng Panginoon. Pangatlong teaching niya, eto na, pumasok na ngayon yung istorya ng rich young ruler. Ayan. Kasi, ito palang rich young ruler, I believe, was stalking the Lord. While he was teaching, This rich young ruler was observing the Lord Jesus Christ. Probably he was listening to his teachings or probably he was observing what the Lord Jesus Christ will do the next. That's why when he was about to go the other way, alam niyo yung ginawa nitong rich young ruler? He hastily ran. Di ba nabasa natin? Running to him. Now who is this rich young ruler? Wala po itong pangalan. Now, to our brethren here, you have heard a lot of messages about the rich young ruler. But nevertheless, we can never, never exhaust the Word of God. May makukuha pa rin tayong spiritual lessons dito sa buhay nitong rich young. Hindi po ito parable. Ito po'y tunay na istorya na nangyari. Ha? Rich young ruler. Kaya pinamagatan ko pong itong mensaheng ito na rich young rulers First love. Ano ba yung kanyang unang pag-ibig talaga? Hmm. Una, siya napakayaman. Alam niyo po ba, ang riches ah, ay ginagamit ng jablo yan una para tayo maging mayabang. Totoo yan. Ginagamit ng jablo yan upang tayo ay maging mataas ang paningin natin sa ating sarili. Ginagamit ng jablo yan upang tayo ay lumayo sa Panginoon. Kaya, kung ating bibigyan ng pansin ng salita ng Panginoon, spiritual riches this is described as spiritually valueless. Spiritually valueless. Hmm. Nakalagay po yan sa Psalms 49, verses 6 to 7. Tingnan nyo po sa screen. I'd like to request our uh, beloved brethren there na medyo uh, alerto po tayo sa Bible verses. Yan lang naman ang aking PowerPoint. Ha? Huh? They that trust in their, rich, in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. And verse number 7, tingnan niyo po, None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. Hindi pala pwedeng dalhin ka sa langit sa pamamagitan ng kayamanan. Amen? It is spiritually valueless. 
Kaya yung iba po dito may mga kayamanan, ah, maaaring panahu- panauhin ka namin ngayong umaga, ayun yung sabi ng Panginoon. You see, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Hindi mo pwedeng bayaran yung kaligtasan ng kaluluwa niya para madala yung kaluluwa ng kapatid mo doon sa langit. Spiritually valueless. Hmm. Ano pa ang ibig sabihin ng riches? Riches po ay inferior kumpara po sa riches na ibinibigay spiritually ng Panginoon. Hebrews 11.26 Ano ang sinabi ng pinakamayamang tao sa buong mundo? Ha? Huh? Kapantay siguro ito ni King Solomon. Hmm. Ano sabi niya? Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than what? The treasures in Egypt? Aba, mga kapatid, kung sinagpang ni Moses yung kayamanan doon sa buong Egypt, mas mayaman pa siya kay Solomon. What do you think? Eh, buong Egypt yun eh. Kita niya, may mga sinakop na bansa yung Egypt. You see? At yung, yung kayamanan ng Egypt na yan, ang tagapagmana ay si Moses. Pero mas minahalaga. Ayun ang ibig sabihin ng esteeming. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Mas minahalaga niya ang kahihiyan ni Kristo Jesus. Mas dakilang kayamanan kaysa sa kayamanan doon sa Egypto. Amen, brethren? What a heart. What an affection. Ayan ang first love ni Moses. Ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. The Lord Jesus Christ. You see? Amen, brethren? It is inferior. And uh, riches is fleeting. Ano ba yung fleeting? Nawawala. Mm. Tira nyo sa Proverbs 23.5. If my memory still serves me clear. Proverbs 23.5. Ano sinabi ni Solomon tungkol sa kayamanan? Huh? Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Ano yung which is not? Yung riches. Bakit mo ilalagay ang mata mo dun sa kayamanan na hindi pwede sa'yo magbigay ng kapayapaan at ng kaligtasan ng iyong kaluluwa? For riches certainly make themselves wings. Naku, meron palang pakpak ang kayamanan sa ating mga working and professionals dito. May pakpak ang kayamanan, sabi ni Solomon. Ayun nakalagay, oh, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Mm. Oh, maliwala kayo dyan, hindi ko po salita yan. Salita po ng Panginoon yan through Solomon. May pakpak ang kayamanan. Anong ibig mo sabihin, preacher? Ang ibig ko pong sabihin, ang kayamanan pwedeng mawala sa iyo ng isang iglap. Oh, come on, sir. Pwede mo bang i-prove yan? Nangyari po yan doon sa mga mayayaman sa Germany during World War II. Alam niyo po ba yan? Ang daming mga mayayaman doon and when the war erupted, anong nangyari? Bagsak lahat ang investment. Lahat ng mga mayayaman doon, they were reduced to what? To paupers. Isang iglap lang, declaration lang ng digmaan. Oh, ayun ang ibig sabihin ng Panginoon, that riches have wings. Hmm. Ano pa ho? Aba, eh kapag ka nagkaroon ng calamities, like earthquake, wag naman sana mangyari. Ha? Kasi nagbuboom na po yung economy natin, ipanalangin natin sa Panginoon to uh, thwart this Serious calamity of earthquakes. At dahilan dyan, ang dami na po natin ng mga high-rise buildings. Sapagkat pag pinahintulot ng Panginoon ang terrible earthquake, a magnitude of 9 to 10 in 2 minutes, all these buildings will become rubbles and we will be in the state of emergency and I believe millions of people will be dead. And funeral parlors cannot accommodate dead bodies. There will be mass graves just like World War II. Just think of it. Abay, pagka lumilindol, Ha? At naglalakad ka sa may ayala, nako, eh, hindi ka mamamatay sa sa tawag dito sa pagbagsak ng building. Mamamatay ka diyan. Sabi nga sa akin ng isang kapatid natin na arkitekto, mamamatay ka Brad, hindi doon sa mga tipak ng bato. Mamamatay ka sa mga salamin. Tama siya. Kasi kapag ka umugayan, yung mga salamin na yan, lili pa rin ng hangin, at kapag naglalakad ka ng mga ilang metro, pwede matagpas ang ulo mo. Ay puro salamin yung mga buildings eh. Lili pa rin ang hangin yan. Kikita mo na lamang, ang daming patay, hindi sa lindol na matay, tinamaan ng mga salamin. Di ba? Calamities. Pwedeng ma-reduce ang kayamanan mo. Hmm. Kaya nga, ang sabi ni uh, Apostle Paul, that riches is uncertain. Di ba nakalagay yan sa the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, I think? 
uh, verse number 17. Kung tama, no? paki-check nyo yung aking uh, uh, verse. 1 Timothy 6.17, tama ba? Hmm? Charge them, praise God, that are rich in this world. Sino kaya mayaman dito? Huh? That they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Ayun yung connecting verse niya sa Proverbs 23. Uncertain riches, and it has wings. Mm. But in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Mm. Kaya kayo po, na may mga kaya dito, na mga kapatiran natin, napakahirap nyo nang manalangin ng Lord's Prayer. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. O, ewan ko sa inyo rito, yung may mga pera sa bangko, napap- napapanalangin nyo po ba yun sa Panginoon? Give us this day. Hindi nyo pwedeng ipanalangin yun. Ito, sir, mukha yatang maling doktrina yun. Ha? Totoo po yun, hindi nyo pwedeng panalangin yun. Bakit po? Bakit po? Sapakat meron kang pera sa bangko, eh. ando na yung daily bread mo, eh. nasa bangko na eh. Tama? So, ibig mo ba sabihin, sir, hindi na ako mananalangin sa daily bread? Mananalangin ka, pero hindi na yung give us this daily bread. O ano yung panalangin natin? Bilang mana ng palataya. The right prayer is this, Lord, if it is your will, and if I found favor in thy sight, Lord, you can increase the bread and the blessings you entrusted to me. Ayun ang prayer ng mga Kristiyanong pinagpala materially. Hindi yung, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Na yung daily bread mo, nasa bangko na nga eh. Amen? Tama ba? Tama ba yung sinasabi ko, mga kapatid? You see? But rather, if God would be favorable to you, ask for His mercy to bless it more. Not for yourself, but for His glory. Amen? That we can give more. And we can be a channel of blessings to others. You see? Kaya ka binigyan ng Panginoon ng ganyang Uh, pagkakataon. That is an opportunity and a blessing from the Lord. Favor from Him. Ang tawag ko dyan, gracious bonus ng Panginoon. Mm. Katulad ng kalusugan natin, gracious bonus ng Panginoon sa atin yan. You see? But what will we do with our health and with our wealth? We should do that all for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Di ba? Mm. Do we have the heart to give to the Lord? Mm. Naalala ko tuloy, yung uh, isang Kristiyano na ang kanyang uh, mentality ay nakafocus lang. Parang meron siyang uh, tawag dito, cover sa kanyang dalawang mata. Ah, basta't ako nakapagbigay ng tithes and offerings ko, lahat ng mga bagay ko, wala na akong pakialam. Wala na akong pakialam sa mga magulang ko. Wala na akong pakialam sa mga kabag-anak ko. Wala na akong pakialam sa mga kapatid ko sa Panginoon. Basta't nabigay ko yung tithes and offerings ko. Mga kapatid, wala po ako nakita ang Bible verse na patungkol dyan. You see? Christians always have the heart to give. You see? Nga lang, minsan, ito yung mga irony ng buhay. May mga tao na, uh, tawag dito, generous sa kaibigan, kuripot sa magulang. Generous sa kaibigan, kuripot sa kapatid sa Panginoon. Di ba? Sweet sa kanyang mga kaibigan, malupit sa kanyang pamilya. Mga irony ng buhay. Kaya nga mga kapatid, if you will study the Word of God, the Lord taught us how to live a balanced life. Balanced life. Hindi po dapat extreme to extreme ang mga Kristiyano. You see? So here, you will find that this rich young ruler was living in wealth And you know what? He was young. And you know the, the vigor and the stre- strength of a young man. He can do almost everything because of his bastion of health. And thirdly, he was a powerful man. Tatlo na mga privileges na binigay sa kanya ng Panginoon na hindi niya na-recognize. Kayamanan, kalakasan sapagkat siya'y bata. Pangatlo, siya ay isang makapangyarihang ruler. Pero alam niyo, sa buhay niya, hindi nakapagbigay ng kapayapaan at satisfaction yung mga bagay na yon. Kaya nga siya ay naghahanap. Naghahanap siya hanggang sa makita niya ang tunay niyang hinahanap. You see? At alam niyo, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, while he was observing and stalking the Lord, 
uh, and the Lord was about to leave, hinabul niya ang Panginoon, and he was running. Why running? Bakit kaya sa tumatakbo? Because I believe that this man would like his question to be answered immediately. Kaya ngayon pong umaga, I believe that your question about your need, spiritual need this morning, should be like this young man. You should run as fast as you can because this day is your salvation. Now is the day of your salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Huwag nyo nang ipagpaliban pa. Kayo pong mga naanyayahan dito ng inyong mga kaibigan o boss kaya ng company, don't ever forget na na inanyayahan kayo, hindi lamang po basta paanyaya because the Lord burdened the hearts of the members of our church to bring you here so that you will hear this priceless message from the Lord that you need the rest of your life and that is your spiritual salvation. Amen? So, ito pong mayaman na ito ay lumapit sa Panginoon running, running and then he declared this declaration and he said, Good Master. Good Master. And you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ responded to him and he said, Why callest thou me good? I was reading my Bible. Why would the Lord Jesus Christ answer and respond to this man in this manner? Why callest thou me good? Bakit mo ako tinatawag na mabuti? Hmm. Now, the Lord impressed upon my heart. He was actually telling the man, Why are you calling me good? Look at those Pharisees. They accuse me of being Satan and Beelzebub. Look at the scribes, those unbelieving Jews. They accuse me as the friends of sinners, of publicans and wine beaver. Tinawag akong lasinggero ng mga taong yan. Do you believe them? Na ako'y lasinggero? Why callest thou me good? Why callest thou me good? Kung ang pagtingin mo lang sa akin ay tao, hindi Diyos, ay bakit mo ako tinatawag na mabuti? Sapagkat walang mabuti, wala kahit na isa. Romans 3.10 Amen? There is none good, no not one. Kaya kung ang pag-istima mo lang sa akin ay isang tao lamang, hindi Diyos, ay hindi ako mabuti. Bakit mo ako tinatawag na mabuti? Sapagkat walang nabuhay na tao mula kay Adan hanggang sa ngayon na mabuti, perfect, holy, walang kasalanan. Romans 3.10 For all, uh, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. To our visitors, do you believe that? That's the Lord's declaration. Romans 3.23 It says right there, for all. Does, does it include you? I include myself. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Bakit mo ako tinatawag na mabuti? There is none good save one, and that is... God. So, the Lord is implying to that man, hey, you are looking at me as a human being, but listen here, I am also God. That's the meaning of it. That's why if you know me, not only as a human being, but as your God and your Lord and Savior, I am really good. I am perfect. I am holy. I am sinless. But if you look upon me as only a human being without me as your God, then there is none good as far as human beings are concerned. There is only one good, and that is God who became a man. And that God who became a man was no other than Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the second person of the triune God. Amen? You see? So here, the Lord, uh, this young man says, Good Master, that's the question. And then the Lord Jesus Christ answered him wisely. And then he said, this next question is this, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Alam nyo, the Lord Jesus Christ did not answer him directly, but indirectly. Thou knowest the commandments, the Lord Jesus Christ said. Nabasa nyo, di ba? Alam mo, pinag-uutos ng Diyos. Inilarawan ng Panginoon at inilatag niya ang mga commandments. Actually, anim lang yung binigay ng Panginoon eh. And he said, Lord, I have kept them. Ibig sabihin nito, yung anim na commandments na yon na inilatag ng Panginoon ay sinunod niya. Eh, may sampung commandments eh. Mm, okay. Thou knowest the commandments. 
Lord, I have kept them. What must I do, Lord? So ang mentality pala nitong rich young ruler na ito ay meron siyang iniisip na kaparaanan kung papaano siya pumunta ng langit. Kasi mayaman nga siya eh, at makapangyarihan siya. Bigay mo sa akin, Lord, ang paraan. Siguro ang paraan, Lord, ah, pwede akong gumawa ng mabuti. Kailangan ko sigurong tumulong sa mga kapwa ko. Okay ba yun, Lord, para pumunta ako sa langit? Ano sabi sa Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9? Basahin po natin. Yung bang good works natin, pwedeng maging paraan papunta ng langit? For by grace are you saved through faith. Ayun pala, hindi ka pa pala pwedeng maligtas sa pamamagitan ng iyong good works. Kung hindi sa biyaya o pag-ibig ng Diyos, sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Kristo. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Sabi ng Panginoon, not of works. That's why His question, what must I do? The Lord answered, not of works. You cannot do anything. You know why? Because I did everything for you. Amen? Sapagkat kapag ka ang basihan ng pagpunta mo sa langit ay sa pamamagitan ng iyong kapangyarihan at sa iyong pera, eh ano pa ang saysay ng Panginoon bakit siya nagkatawang tao at namatay sa krus ng kalbaryo at nagdusa para sa atin? Eh di wala palang saysay yon. It is an exercise in futility. Kasi pwede mong bilhin ang kaligtasan eh. Kaya sinabi ng Panginoon, hindi sa pamamagitan ng mabuting gawa mo. Lest any man should boast. Ayun ang sabi ng Panginoon. Oh, okay, wag niyong alisin yan. Libre naman mag-imagine uh, mag, ano, mag, uh, uh, mag ngayon. I'd like you to imagine right now. Halimbawa kaya, ang pagpunta ng langit ay sa pamamagitan ng good works. Halimbawa lang. Ano kaya mangyayari sa langit? Ayun sabi ng Bible, oh, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ano kaya mangyayari sa langit? Ayun na nakalagay, oh. Lahat ay magyayabang sa langit. Kasi pumunta ka sa pamamagitan ng mabuting gawa mo, eh. You know, not of works. Lest any man should boast. I-reverse mo yan. O di magyayabang tayong lahat. Kaya ito si Peter, nakita ni John. Halimbawa lang, kausap ang Panginoon. Si John nagselo. Sabi niya, Panginoon, nakalimutan mo na ba kung paano ko binuhusan ng kumukulong langis doon sa Isle of Patmos? Panginoon, ako dapat ang kausapin mo. Lagi hindi si Peter. Nagbo-boss tayo ngayon doon sa ating ginawa. Sabi naman nung isa, si, uh, uh, si, uh, si uh, palagay natin ang pangalan niya ay si Ralph. Si Ralph ng Panginoon, hindi dapat si John. Dapat ako lagi ang ka-fellowship mo. Bakit? Sapagkat ako'y naglakad ng isang libong milya during Holy Week. Nagkaroon ako ng, ng uh, heat stroke at ako'y namatay. Panginoon, dapat ikaw ay maging malapit sa akin. Sabi naman ni, ni uh, uh, Jeffrey, Panginoon, hindi, hindi dapat si Ralph. Dapat ik So on and so forth. Ipagmamayabang na natin yung mga ginawa natin sa Panginoon. You see? Not of work, sabi ng Panginoon. Bakit? Sapagkat ginawa kong lahat ito para sa iyo. Wala nang natira para sa iyo. I did it all for you. What must I do? Wala kang magagawa kung hindi ano lamang. Magsisi ng iyong kasalanan at lumapit ka sa Panginoon by faith. Right now. Maring sabihin mo sa akin, preacher, hindi ko naman nakikita ang Panginoon dito. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Ngayon, andito ang Panginoon at ang business niya ay ito. Siya'y kumakatok sa pintuan ng ating mga professional young people. Di ba kinakausap ka niya ngayon sa ating mga bisita? Kumakatok siya, If any man open the door, I will... Come to Him and will sup with Him and He with me. Sabi ko nga sa inyo ng mga nakaraang messages ko, meron po ako nakitang painting na kung saan ang Panginoon ay kumakatok literally sa isang pintuan. Imagine ng isang pintuan ang Panginoon kumakatok. Pero makikita mo doon sa painting na yon ay walang doorknob sa, lo- sa labas ng pinto. Walang doorknob. Eh nasaan kaya yung doorknob sa mga bisita po natin? Ayun, nakikislapan ang mga mata ninyo. Alam ko, nasagot ninyo. Sir, nasa loob po yung doorknob. Tama po kayo. Sapagkat ang Panginoon, kailanman, hindi niya pipilitin ang sarili niyang pumasok sa puso mo. You need to open yourself the doorknob inside your heart and let the Son of God and God the Son who loves you so much enter your heart and be your King, your Lord, and your Savior this morning. Ang tanong, nagawa niyo na ba yan before? O, 
Ngayon pa lang, kayo inuudyokan ng Panginoon na gawin nyo ito. You see? Mm. Kaya sinabi niya, thou knowest the commandments. Ginawa niya na po lahat yun. At, pinakabandang huli, sinubukan ng Panginoon yung content ng kanyang puso. Sino ba talaga ang first love niya? Siya o yung kanyang kayamanan? Kaya, ang pagsubok ng Panginoon dun sa rich young ruler ay ito. Nabasa niyo kanina. Sell all that thou have and distribute unto the poor and come and follow me. Alam niyo po ang sabi ng Biblia? That man was grieved in his own heart. Nasaktan siyang sobra. At he left the Lord Jesus Christ, he turned away, and he left the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because the rich young ruler's first love is not the Lord Jesus Christ. It's still his wealth. Choose you this morning, my dear friends, who is your first love? Your riches that the Bible says is spiritually valueless, that is inferior, that is fleeting, and that is, uh, you know, hurtful? Or the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author of all the blessings to enjoy? The Lord Jesus Christ, until now, loves you so much. Hanggang sa ngayon, sa kabila ng iyong mga kasalanan, Hanggang ngayon, umiibig ang Diyos sa iyo. Or the Lord Jesus Christ, who proved His love by giving His body voluntarily on the cruel cross and took your punishment and my punishment in His own body on the tree. He shed His precious blood to wash away your sins. So that if you will repent this morning and open your heart to Him, you will find forgiveness and you will be given eternal life. Choose you this morning. Are you like this man whose first love is wealth? Or will you choose the Lord Jesus Christ to be your greatest wealth and your greatest provider? The Lord Jesus Christ said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Tinan niyo po sa Matthew 11, 28. Ayan ang invitation ng Panginoon sa inyo. Professionals ka man, bisita ka man namin ngayong umaga, bata ka man, high school or college, ito yung sinabi ng Panginoon sa atin. Come unto me. Inaanyayahan ka ng Panginoon personally. Hindi para lumapit sa akin bilang preacher. Hindi po. Hindi sa pare o sa papa. O sino man pastor. Kung hindi lumapit ka kay Kristo Jesus by faith, Siya yung Kristo Jesus ng Biblia na hindi pa natin nakita. But right now, He's still in the business of knocking at the door of your own heart. Will you come to Him? Only that labor and are heavy laden. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Kayong mga pagod na, nabibigat ang lubha sa kasalanan. And look at me, my dear friends. Hindi ko alam ang mga buhay niyo ngayong umaga. But I have a good news for you. Alam ng Panginoon ang ibinubuhay mo ngayon. And in the light of God's Word, ang sabi po ng Biblia, you're living in sin. At sabi ng Panginoon, you are tired already of your sins. Ikaw nakakaalam niyan, tsaka Panginoon. Hindi ko alam yan eh. Pero in the light of God's word, alam ng Panginoon ang buhay mo. He knew that you're tired of your sin. Kaya inaanyayahan ka niya lumapit sa kanya eh. Bakit po? Sapagkat sila mga tanging persona na may kapangyarihang patawarin ka. Hugasan ka ng kanyang banal na dugo. Iligtas ka sa kapahamakan ng kasalanan. At bigyan ka ng buhay na walang hanggan. At bibigyan kita ng kapahingan. Alam niyo ba ibig sabihin ng rest? Rest means forgiveness. Di ba ang isang bata na pinatawad ng tatay, nagkakaroon siya ng kapayapaan? Di ba? Ng rest? Ganon din. Kapag ka ngayong umaga, ang iyong kasalanan ay ibinigay mo. Hindi sa akin ha. Kung hindi sa Panginoong Heso Kristo by faith right now, the Lord will give you rest. Ayan yung peace of mind and heart, knowing that all your sins were washed away by His precious blood. Ayan ang ibig sabihin nun. Choose you this morning. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said in verse number 23 of Mark chapter 10, tinan niyo po yung sinabi ng Panginoon. Sa Mark chapter 10 and verse number 23, And Jesus looked round about and said unto His disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Hindi po nagsasabi niya na hindi pwedeng pumunta na mga mayayaman, but how hardly. It is not impossible, pero 
napakahirap sa isang tao na ang kanyang priority ay ang kayamanan rather than the Lord. Who is your priority, professionals, this morning? Your riches? Your education? Your work? Your money? Your power? Or the Lord Jesus Christ? And you know what? If you will choose the Lord Jesus Christ, you have chosen a priceless priceless wealth because He has the power to bless your life both spiritually and if it is will even materially choose you this morning will you turn your back from the Lord just like this rich young ruler's first love or you will embrace the Lord today by receiving Him by faith ngayong umaga sa inyong puso oh don't tarry anymore young men come to the Lord by faith Come to Him in repentance, humbling yourselves. He died for you, was buried after three days and three nights. He rose from the grave and He is waiting for you, my dear visitors. Ang tanong, ikakahiya mo ba siya? O tatakbo ka sa kanya? Katulad itong yang men na ito, tumakbo. Pero yung pagtakbo niya pala, peke. Sana kayo ay tumakbo ngayon sa Panginoon at real ang inyong pagtakbo at yung pagluhod nyo ay real sapagkat kailangan nyo ang tunay na wealth ng buhay nyo. And He is no other than God the Son and the Son of God. Amen? The Lord Jesus Christ. Choose you this day. Will you choose Him? I beg of you, choose the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Tayo po tumayong lahat. I believe God has spoken to your own hearts, young men, young ladies, visitors and friends. I believe. And I believe also that our God spoke to the hearts of our brethren here, especially our brethren that has been blessed by the Lord with a gracious bonus of entrusting wealth. How did God speak to us? Every head bow down, every eyes closed. Siguro po for 30 seconds to one minute. Nais kong anyayahan ang mga kapatiran as you're, as you're standing there to have a sigh of prayer. I do not know if confession or thanksgiving or probably a, a vow. I do not know how God spoke to you, brethren. For 30 seconds to a minute, can you pray right now? Will you pray right now? Let's pray.